Okay, let's talk a little bit about sex versus gender today. Okay, so you can see some information here on this slide. So pause it and read it if you would like. Gender is defined by our culture. So it's what our society decides it means to be male or female. Okay, it's defined by society. And not every society defines it in the same way. Your gender expression is how a person presents their gender to the world. You could do that through clothes, through hairstyle, through body language, through what pronouns you use, um, a whole slew. It's how you present your gender to the world. Pronouns are a piece of that learning someone's pronouns, most basic way that you can acknowledge someone's gender. Are they choosing to use she, her pronouns? Use them. Are they choosing to use he, him pronouns? Use them. Are they choosing to use she and they pronouns? Use them. It's how they're choosing to express their gender. So we can kind of look at it like this. So we have sex assigned at birth. So the medical community ticks a little box and labels you. Gender identity is how you see yourself. Gender expression, how you display your gender for the world. And then gender attribution could be considered how people perceive your gender. And they may misgender you and that's something that some people just need to get a little better at. So sex is biological, but it's not as simple as some people think. So it's your chromosomes, it's your genitalia, the organs, internal and external, and it's also hormones, receptors, a whole slew of things. Sex assigned at birth. Could be male, could be female, could be intersex. What does it mean to be cis? So you may have heard that and may not know what it means, okay? Um, it means that you are, your perceived gender matches the sex that you were assigned at birth. Cisgender, okay? It's okay to say that you're cis, but refrain from saying things like, I'm not trans, I'm ordinary, I'm normal, I'm a real gender, I'm a biological one, or I'm a biological, I'm cis. My gender identity matches the sex that I was assigned at birth. That's it. What does it mean to be intersex? Well, it means that a person might have chromosomes or genitalia or internal or external sex organs um, that just don't match up with our typical male versus female. Okay, so there's a range of possibilities for intersex. It is not simply having two sets of external genitalia. It is much more than that. And it accounts for a lot more than people might think. Um, if you know someone with red hair, then you assuredly know someone who is intersex. And it's probably a lot higher than that in terms of its prevalence. So what does it mean to be trans? Uh, it means not cis. So remember, cis means my gender identity matches the sex I was assigned at birth. If I'm trans, my gender identity does not match the gender I was assigned at birth. So I could be non-binary, I could be trans, okay, I could be gender fluid. Here you can see um, a whole list of possibilities. It just means not cis. You do not identify in the way that you were assigned at birth. Although many people have this misconception that sex is XX and XY, XX, female, XY, male. Uh, it's literally not so simple. 
And there is a great Twitter thread that I'm going to walk you through that shows this looking at sex through a biologist's perspective. So friendly neighborhood biologist here. I see a lot of people are talking about biological sexes and gender right now. Lots of folks make biological sex sex seem real simple, like X, X, Y, right? Well, since it's so simple, let's find the biological roots, shall we? Let's talk about sex. If you know a bit about biology, you will probably say that biological sex is caused by chromosomes, XX and your female, XY and your male. This is chromosomal sex. But is it biological sex? Well, turns out there's only one gene on the Y chromosome that really matters to sex. It's called the SRY gene. During human embryonic development, the SRY protein turns on male-associated genes. So having an SRY gene makes you genetically male. But is this biological sex? Sometimes the SRY gene pops off the Y chromosome and gets on an X chromosome. Surprise! So now you have an X with an SRY and a Y without an SRY. So what does that mean? Well, a Y chromosome with no SRY means physically you're female, but chromosomally you're male, XY, and genetically you're female, no SRY. An X with an SRY means physically you're male, chromosomally female, XX, and genetically male because you have the SRY. But biological is, sex is simple. There must be another answer. Sex-related genes ultimately turn on hormones in specific areas of the body and reception of those hormones by cells throughout the body. Is this the root of biological sex? So hormonal male means you produce normal levels of male-associated hormones, except some percentage of females will have higher levels of male hormones and then some percentage of males. Ditto, ditto, female hormones. So some males have higher levels of female hormones than even females do. And if you are developing, your body may not produce enough hormones for your genetic sex, leading you to be genetically male or female, chromosomally male or female, hormonally non-binary, and physically non-binary. Well, except cells have something to say about this. Maybe cells are the right answer to biological sex, right? Cells have receptors that hear the signal from sex hormones. But sometimes those receptors don't work, like a mobile phone that's on do not disturb. Call and call, and they won't answer. So what does all this mean? It means that you may be genetically male or female, chromosomally male or female, hormonally male, female, or non-binary, with cells that may or may not hear the male, female, non-binary call. All of this leading to a body that can be male, non-binary, female. Try out some combinations for yourself. Notice how confusing it gets. Can you point to what the absolute cause of biological sex is? Is it fair to judge people by it? Of course, you could try appealing to the numbers. Most people are either male or female, you say. Except that as a biologist professor, I will tell you. The reason I don't have my students look at their own chromosomes in class is because people could learn that their chromosomal sex doesn't match their physical sex. And learning that in the middle of a 10 point assignment is just not the time. Biological sex is complicated. Before you discriminate against someone on the basis of biological sex and identity, ask yourself, have you seen your chromosomes? Do you know the genes of the people you love? Do you know the hormones of the people you work with? The state of their cells? Since the answer will obviously be no, please be kind. Respect others' people's right to tell you who they are. And remember that you don't have all the answers. 
again. Biology is complicated. Kindness and respect don't have to be. So trans girls are girls. Trans boys are boys. The Transgender Day of Visibility is March 31st. Why do trans people need more visibility? Some alarming statistics. Let's look at a few. 80% of trans students feel unsafe at school because of their gender expression. 49%, that's half, of trans people reported physical abuse. 50% have been raped or assaulted by a romantic partner. Trans people of color are six times more likely to experience a physical violence when interacting with the police. One in five transgender people have experienced homelessness. One in eight have been evicted. 41% have attempted suicide. These are just some of the statistics. So in this unit, I will focus on the biology, the actual body parts not on the terms male or female. Questions? And that's a very basic discussion of sex versus gender. Again, if you wish to read this, you can pause this. Um, but this distinction is important for understanding as we move forward in this unit.